Yum, yum! Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at constraining a rigged and animated character uh, to a path. The first step is to choose the, uh, the rig master control, uh, choose the mesh layer in which the, the path is drawn, and use Modo's path constraint under modifiers. In the setup layout, use the path constraint. The initial result doesn't look correct, but let's not panic yet. So let's hide the bind mesh for a second. Now we can see that the rig was actually attached properly. So the next step is to make uh, the character move along the path. And for this to happen, we're going to add the master control to the schematic view, to the workspace in schematic view, and that pulls the path constraint with it. To make the character move along the path, we need to animate um, the path percentage channel on the path constraint. So at the first frame, at frame zero, I'm going to keyframe it with the value of 0%. And uh, at the last frame, which in my case is frame 71, I'll keyframe it with the value of 100%. And finally, I will change this new curve uh, interpolation to linear so the character moves at the constant speed, like so. OK, so let's get to fixing deformations now. I'm going to unhide my mesh and switch to the setup mode. And here you can see what is the reason for the bad deformation. It's because in the setup mode, my rig no longer sits at the origin and lines up with the mesh as it should. Instead, it gets uh, snapped to the beginning uh, of the path, just like uh, in the scene action. So that's what we need to correct. In short, we have to disable the path constraint in the setup action, but keep it enabled in the scene one. Unfortunately, Moto doesn't provide the enable channel to simply toggle the path constraint on off, and so we will have to mess around with the position and rotation outputs directly. I'm going to grab the matrix blend node and drop it into my workspace, and we will need two of these, so let's place them like that. And we're going to wire the position output through the matrix B input of the matrix blend and plug them back to the word, uh, master control word position and we'll do the same uh, setup for the rotation output. Again, pass it through the matrix B, uh, pass it into matrix B and then pass the output into the word rotation of the master control. Now all we need to do is set the proper blend values for both of the nodes. Uh, so in short, the blend node works in a way that if the blend is at 0%, the matrix A is used, if the blend is 100%, the matrix B is used, and if it's something in between, then we get the mix in between um, of mix of those two uh, matrices. We don't have to plug anything into matrix A, since by default this matrix is an identity matrix, which uh, is going to represent the word um, position at the origin and the default word orientation. And that's exactly what we need. So the default blend at 0% is fine uh, for setup in our rig, so we're going to leave it like that and you can already see that the rig has snapped back at the origin. Um, we just need to make it stick in the setup, so uh, let me select both of these, uh, go to channels and just uh, set both of the channels, blend channels, right click and do, uh, actually it's just going off screen a little bit, so right click and do assign a setup rest value. And this, this, is, this is going to make this 0% this value um, stick uh, in the setup action. So now I can leave the setup and change these values to 100% there. And apply these changes. And as you can see, it works. So now we have a character working along the path in the scene action. And when we switch the setup, you can see that uh, it snaps back, the rig snaps back at the origin correctly. Yum, yum!